If your program CS file looks like a junk drawer, you are setting yourself up for a disaster. But here's the thing, it doesn't need to be that way. In the next few minutes, I will show you a way to turn that chaos into maintainable and organized code that will save you hours in the long run. But why should we care? Think of your program CS file as a Lego box. If you just throw all the pieces in from multiple sets into a single box without sorting them, it will take you forever to build something out of it. But if you organize your pieces in different trays, by color, by size, by the set that you are building, when it comes to build something, it will be super easy. This video shows exactly that. How to keep your code organized, splitting responsibilities and making your code easier to read and to maintain, especially in large applications. Because we know that large applications will keep growing and eventually the entry point of your application will become the dirtiest place of that application. And once we get there, it's hard to know where things are and it's even harder to find what we have in place already. If we take a bird's eye view of the typical program CS file in an ASP.NET application, we'll find that usually we have two regions, one before building the application and another one after. On the one before, we usually will focus on configuring things like dependency injection. After, we'll spend time defining things like middlewares. And we need to have different things in consideration when organizing those two regions of our applications. So let's start by the first one. To organize our program CS, we'll try to apply techniques that we already use in different places of our application. When we have a large file, a huge file, we'll try to extract logic to a different place. Eventually, we can take a step further and think about how we package the logic of our applications. We can package it by layer, we can package it by type, we can package it by feature. So you can think about layer in the same way that you do when you have a project for a presentation, another project for the core of your application, and another one for the infrastructure. When we talk about the types, we are talking about things like organizing by technical concept. Like I have here all the repositories, I have here all the services. But also we have the feature-driven approach. That is something that nowadays we also refer to it as a, a slice, a term that has been popularized by the idea of a vertical slice architecture. That by the way, I have a video on it. To organize our code, we can do exactly the same. We can pick one of those three approaches. I prefer the feature-driven approach, and that's exactly what we'll do until a given moment when we'll need to revisit, but we'll see that later. This that we'll see is my favorite way of doing it. But it's time for a disclaimer. Before you start typing a comment saying, this is a waste of time, this brings more complexity in place, you don't need that. Yeah, I know what you are thinking, let me tell you that if you have a simple ASP.NET application, a simple API, you don't have a huge mess there, you don't need this. Just keep it on the program.cs because once you get there, you will see every single thing there and it's not a big deal. This technique that I will show you, I apply it on applications that start growing and eventually it's hard to understand what it's there inside of our program.cs because once the amount of code that is inside of that program.cs file starts to be a problem, organizing that code will save me time in when I'm debugging, will save time and will improve the experience of the ones that I'm onboarding on my project and also maintaining the project will be easier. I can quickly find what it's been used on each case. So, and how do I like to do it? There's an awesome idea on the how to fact library that is also a dependency injection library that you can find out there that is the idea of modules. You can organize your registration code by modules, what is exactly what we will try to do. It aligns with our idea of organizing it by feature. But normally I don't use HowToFact. I use what comes out of the box with ASP.NET. So the simplest way that I have to organize the code that will be used there is by taking advantage of extension methods. But it's not as simple as throwing all the code inside of an extension method. There's some things that you can do to improve your life. So let's see a practical example. In this case, I want to refactor this program CS file. So the first thing that I will do is to find a feature. Once I find a feature, I know that I want to move that code somewhere. The question is where? I know that it will be an extension method 
but where that extension method will be. The first step is to create a folder. You can name it in the way that you prefer. For example, it might be setup, it might be configuration, but I don't recommend configuration, otherwise it's the same concept that we use to load configurations from things like environment variables, application secrets, all of those things. The name that I like to use is composition. I have a video about the composition route right there. Then I will create a file that will hold the extensions for that feature. Why I don't create a single file like the service collection extensions? Because on that case, I would be moving all the code from the program CS into there. That's not my goal. My goal is that in the moment that I need to change something on that feature, I know the file where I need to go to. And if I want to understand what that feature is using, is every single thing mapped out on that single file. So if my application is built with the vertical slice in mind, this composition folder and the files will be inside of the respective slice. Once I have the file, let's create an extension method to the service collection, but let's name it with something meaningful. Now it's the moment to start bringing the configurations into our extension method. So we will start with the obvious one, the code that was clearly assigned to that feature. Then what we need to do is to dig into that code and understand the dependencies that that code is using. So if we drill down, we'll find several things there. We will bring all of them into the extension and we'll also find dependencies like this one, dependencies that will touch the outside world, things like a database and an API or any other type of dependencies that need configurations. On such cases, we need to have a way to access the configurations. There's mainly two options here. On the first one, we keep the responsibility to access the configurations in the program CS, and we provide all the values as arguments into this method. That's not my preferred approach. Why? I believe that the responsibility of understanding the arguments that are needed are part of those that are defining the dependency. So if this extension method is the one that knows the dependencies that it needs, is the one that should be responsible to grab the configurations that it needs. So what I will do is that I will receive as well as a parameter, the configuration, and I can access the configuration there. But that specific line can bring another question. If I organize my code following the ideas of something like clean architecture, and I have that code as part of my infrastructure project, what I believe is that we should move that code into the project that has those types. Why? If I'm the one that is building the adapter to a database, I should be the one that knows how to configure that adapter. I should be the one that knows which settings do I need to load, which configurations do I need to grab. So what we can do on such cases is to move that part of code as another extension method inside of the infrastructure project. We are basically following along with the existing segregation of responsibilities. So I move the code into that extension and then what do I do? I use that extension method on the other one, on the one that I was composing my feature. Once I have that extension method in place that defines how should I configure this feature, I can now go back into my program CS and simplify it. Throw away every single thing that was moved and only call that method. It's quite descriptive, but once I start applying this to other features, different problems will come. So let's try with another one. We have this one. So I create an extension method as I have done before. I move the code into there and I find the existing dependencies that I need as well. Since this feature is the get and the other one was the create, in this implementation, they share a resource, the repository. That means that now, if I want to follow a strict implementation of a vertical slice and I'm the owner of this slice, I know how I should compose this slice. In fact, I will have duplicated registrations. And now I have good and bad news. The good news is that on this specific case, it was quite simple to solve. You can just say, try add scope. If you use the try add, if it's already registered, I don't need to do anything else. It will skip and that would be the perfect approach. This way, when I'm maintaining a given slice, I don't care about the others. I'm not concerned that by removing a given registration, I might impact other feature. I'm only concerned with mine. But the bad news is that this is not the default way of doing things in .NET. And that means that the complete ecosystem has been built around the idea that we define every single thing in the program CS, so we avoid naturally 
the duplicated registrations. So even being possible to do something like the try head, you will have other packages that you'll bring in place to things like adding a distributed cache using Redis. So that means that the ecosystem is not ready to follow an approach like this. And obviously we could find a workaround, but I don't believe that the value that we'll take out of this justify having the effort of building that workaround. So we need to be pragmatic and step back. And how do we do it? We keep our idea of having features and configuring all the things that the feature needs in a given slice, in a different file, in a different extension method. But then we'll leave the responsibility to define the external dependencies to a single point, our program CS. So we can take advantage of the extension methods that we have been building inside of our infrastructure code. So if I have an infrastructure extension method that lets me bring my database, I now can go to my program CS and still have a quite clear and maintainable definition that can first register the dependencies that I need and then add the features. This way I can avoid those duplicated registrations. I still have a quite clear definition of my code in a maintainable way. But I hope that one day we can simply define the definitions of each slice in a different place with things like the try hat. This way we have organized our services configuration. But there are other things that will be happening on that first block of our program CS. As an example, the configuration of health checks. When you add the health checks to ASP.NET, you will then need to add the individual checks to different dependencies. Once again, you need to do that from a centralized place. However, we can apply the same principles. If I have a given code that is responsible to configure the way that I will be using that dependency, it should also be that place the responsible to define how do I check if that dependency is alive. So what you can do is to go to the extension method that is configuring that dependency, like the database one, and add another extension to add the check to the L checks. One of the advantages of doing this is that eventually duplication will start popping out and things like grabbing the needed configurations to define the connection to a given database to a given API, they can now be centralized in a single place, like this example with the connection string. Once we do that, we now can simplify our program CS once again. And it's quite obvious the improvement in terms of readability. And there are two things that I want you to notice now. One is the readability, the beautiful way that you can read the code now. And the second one is that if you take a look and you think about how you usually configure your program CS, we are basically doing the same thing that the framework is already doing. By offering a set of extension methods, we are bringing a fluent way of defining our application. But as I told you, the program CS doesn't stop there. There's all that code that will come after the application build. All that middleware registration, for example, code to initialize a database. And there we can apply the same strategy. When we see the code becoming complex, we can extract another extension this time an extension to the web application. We can name it accordingly to the feature that we are adding to our application and move the code there and simplify the programs, yes. And that doesn't mean that you need to do it right out of the gate. Many of the things that you'll start adding to your application will not need that, but eventually you'll need to keep paying attention and you will see that the configuration that you will apply to a given middleware, for example, will start growing. And once it starts growing, you can move it to an extension method. There are other types of things that you can apply this strategy to. For example, imagine that you have initialization code of your database. You can also move that code to initialize the database into a given extension and remove it from the program CS. But there's one important note about this section of our program CS. Here, the order matters. Keep in mind that the order that you define the middlewares can have an impact in the outcome of your application. And that, in my opinion, is one argument more to follow this approach. Because when it, that code is a mess, it's hard to understand where we should place things. When it's quite simple and easy to read, it becomes quite obvious. But it can be a problem if you try to create several layers of abstractions that you call from the application. 
So don't organize your code too much. Use one level or two levels max. Once we do all of that and we apply everything to our program CS and we take a look into it, we can see how beautiful and how readable it is now. It's so much simpler. And now imagine this applied to a large scale enterprise application where the program CS has thousands of lines. You can see that it will pay off. And if you find this useful, I have another video that you won't want to miss. In it, I go deeper into the Fluent Builder pattern to configure complex objects, what is an idea that aligns beautifully with every single thing that we have seen today. So make sure that you check it and take your code organization to a different level.